more chair here for anyone who'd like. Uh, it's really nice tonight not only to have Josh uh, in terms of amnesty, the basic presence in the Boston area, but the head of the board uh, from New York, Sharon Hashimi, uh, joining us. So uh, amnesty is going to receive quite a bit of emphasis tonight. Now, for 46 years, I've given a talk with questions along the way. I'm not going to stop now. So anytime something concerns you, let's deal with it, okay? Well, how does one get into Eric Fromm? When I was 18 years old, I watched a program, a Mike Wallace interview of Fromm. And Wallace introduced him as the most important psychoanalyst since Freud, which may have been true. But in the course of the interview, it became clear that this was only one of Fromm's lives. He made it pretty clear that he was a political activist, a Talmudic scholar, a founder of Amnesty, a student of the Holocaust, someone concerned with love and had just published the book, The Art of Loving, which sold 33 million copies. And so it became clear that there were many lives, not one life. And so as an 18-year-old about to go to college, I asked my father, do we have any books on from? And he points up there to the cabinet and said, we have all of the books on from. Where were you? So I took from and looked at the diverse lives. And I'd like to go through some of them with you. The psychoanalyst clinician is pretty clear. He called it not opposition to Freud, but, quote, dancing with Freud. And in this dance with Freud, Fromm has two basic concepts. One he calls character, character structure. Something within us, and it's not Freud's inner drives, just some kind of energy within us, is shaped by the external social milieu in different ways with different conditions and people to give us our basic char character, a good, a bad, a mixed character, but that. And so unlike Freud, where the inner drives are central, for from the external social structures are central. The other concept is what he calls central relatedness. And this is quite a break from Freud. For Freud, the analyst uh, was neutral, and the analyst end projected, transferred his or her baggage onto the analyst. The analyst didn't have much of a presence. That's not what Freud, Fromm's central relatedness is. What he basically sees it as the soul of the clinician and the soul of the client, the patient, uh, connecting, intersecting on a deep emotional basis. That is, the clinician is active and shows himself or herself, totally unlike the Freudian orthodox posture. Now, this can lead to benefits, obviously, but it also can lead to problems. When the clinician opens himself or herself totally uh, to the patient, here the clinician's giving away a lot, showing a lot, attaching to the patient in odd ways. 
And in Fromm's case, it led to a lot of what we could call unethical uh, breaches. Uh, he, uh, uh, among other things, uh, just the case is Jerry Holton here. No. Uh, Jerry told me the story about how he went to visit Fromm in Cuernavaca. And he got up there. And Fromm proceeded to tell him for three hours about his patient, Elizabeth Taylor. That's not kosher. Uh, my affair count is 19 at this point. A lot. Uh, Martha Graham, on and on, you just name them. So, but this is all the risk of central relatedness. You get all charged up, and you lose sight of the fact you're supposed to take care of that client, that patient. So uh, Martha Graham, I mean, I have a long list, but you don't need to have all the details. If you want the details, I'll give you later, all right? So this is from the clinician. The Character, character structure and the central relatedness. And in both cases, it's the social that's central and the interaction with the other that's central. Okay, from second life is as a Talmudic scholar. He has a mess when he's a child. Uh, the mother is deeply depressed the father is manic as heck, and they hate each other. And here Fromm is caught in the middle of that. And so as an escape, he first finds an uncle who studies the Talmud every day. And he emerges and befriends him. And then he finds some other Talmudic scholars and rabbis and thinks of becoming a rabbi. And looking at text, Old Testament is a way to kind of stabilize yourself, hold on amidst the horror of that household. And it's not, I think, sufficiently emphasized how central this Talmudic quality was, not only emotionally to Fromm, uh, but in his scholarship. His dissertation, he got a dissertation in the mid-1920s uh, in sociology, and the dissertation was on the Hasidics, basically, and how the Hasidics' love, joy, were jovial, opened up, was what life was, should be about, as his life in his household of his parents wasn't. And... If you want to get a favorite Fromm book, it's not Escape from Freedom, it's not Art of Loving, uh, it's Ye Shall Be as Gods. It's the most beautiful thing he has ever written. It's on the Old Testament. He treats the words of the Old Testament like music. And you listen to the Old Testament. It's just a remarkable book, read it, but it shows this very serious, very important Talmudic scholar. And by the mid-1920s, he clearly has a prophetic disposition. There's ethics, it's a universal ethics, it should apply globally. So this is a second from the Talmudic scholar. Now the third is a political activist. And here amnesty comes into play. When you sell 33 million copies of a book, Art of Loving, we don't, when you write at least 15 books, not one sells less than a million copies. I mean, you're dealing with massive royalties. But he gives it all away. And what